Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Mike's Movie Talk, the show where we talk about movies. Today, we have a very special guest, Lily Calhoun, Hello. and we're talking about Fantastic Mr. Fox. Wow. What a great movie. It you love this movie. movie. I love this movie. This, I believe, is the perfect movie. I don't know if Mike fully believes me yet, but I'll make my case You might today. have to convince me. I will. Perfect movie is, is a very high praise. I want to give you guys a spoiler warning in case you haven't seen Fantastic Mr. Fox, but you should. You should watch it right after you watch this. Yes. It, it is on Disney+. Plus. It is. It is, so... Great opportunity. So what is Fantastic Mr. Fox? You're, you're like, you clicked on this video and you're like, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what this is. Um, <laughs> it's a, it came out in 2009. Uh, it's directed by Wes Anderson and it's based on the book by Roald Dahl. Um, and Roald Dahl is a children's author. He also wrote uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the BFG, uh, Matilda and James and the Giant Peach. Just that's just a few of his many great works. Mike so. and I are both really big fans of Roald. We Dahl. are, yes. Yeah. We just, I just figured that out. Um, <laughs> that you were actually. <laughs> <laughs> you just learned that you are a Roald Dahl fan. <laughs> Fantastic Mr. Fox follows the story of Foxy Fox. That's his actual name. Um, Never once in the movie. They don't except say potentially yeah. by Mrs. Fox. I think she does call him Foxy at some point. I could be wrong. I didn't, but when I watched it, I didn't know it was his first name. Oh, well, was like it's just nickname. like a nickname. Is it called a pet name if they're animals? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So Foxy Fox um, it follows him and his thievery uh, results in his whole family and his community uh, being hunted by three farmers named Bogus Bunts and Bean. They do Very, have a song, it slaps, please go listen to I need, it. I need to listen to that song. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it right now. Local human children sing a kind of airy little rhyme about him. Here, listen to this. But I really think that this this movie is like a combination of two great storytellers. Um, you have Roald Dahl and Wes Anderson. Um, two very like distinct styles, I would say. And many of Roald Dahl's books have had various movie interpretations, or like almost all of them really yeah. have had tons of adaptations. Um, but I think this one really works, and Wes Anderson really makes it his own as a Wes Anderson movie. Yeah, so. and I, I think he would do that with any story that he was given, but I think your point yeah. about it being two very distinct storytellers is really cool because mm -hmm. Roald Dahl, when you read his books, there's this big childlike wonder that comes with that. And I think that that's mm -hmm. an attribute that Wes puts in a lot of his movies through just like the very whimsical way that his characters experience it's their a great lives. mix. It's yeah, a great exactly. Mix of, of it's, people it's a great working combo. On this. You can't go wrong with that combo. Fun fact: Yesterday, actually, before this was filmed, Netflix bought all of the rights to Roald Dahl's works for I, I did just see future that. projects. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yeah, which is so, which is really interesting. It's because, interesting. It's cool. Yeah, especially so, because especially like Char Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Matilda both are two very big movies that have already oh, been yeah. made. Yeah. So. It's, I mean, it's Danny DeVito in it. I don't know what else <laughs> oh Netflix my gosh. is expecting to do I need with to watch it. Matilda again. It's such a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, uh, have you heard about the Wonka prequel movie? No. With Timothy <gasps> Chalamet Wait. as Wonka? Willy Wonka? Oh, that's really That's going to be interesting. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to talk about the casting of this movie because the cast is just amazing here. Um, I'm just going to, we can, I'm just list off the names here and we can talk about more specifically if mm -hmm. we want to. Uh, we have George Clooney, Meryl Streep, Bill Murray, Willem Dafoe, and Owen Wilson. Absolutely. Wow. What? <laughs> All in one movie. And in an animated kids and, movie. And in an too. animated movie. Yeah, I won't even say animated kids movie. Just an animated movie. This isn't movie like in a general. blockbuster, massive movie, which means uh, voice acting. And the voice acting is lovely yeah. in this movie. All of, Everybody does so good in this movie. Yeah. Um, but is, this is not live action, so it's not George Clooney dressed up as a fox. No, if unfortunately, were, I'm sorry. If you were hoping anyway, for that, that kind of movie, this is not it. <laughs> so I found this Wes Anderson quote online about the voice acting um, recording, and it was actually recorded outside and not in a studio, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. We went out in a forest, went in an attic, and went in a stable. We went underground for some things. Uh, there was a great spontaneity in the recordings because of that. So that's really interesting because a lot of that is in like locations in the movie. Right. So I wonder if they're like 
if it's going to be underground in the movie, we should go underground and film the void. That's weird. Right. I feel but, like that, uh, if, if you go back to that childlike wonder thing, mm -hmm. I think that really would put the actors in the headspace of almost like a child's imagination like and thinking, we're here. yeah, right? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm underground. I feel like I yeah. have this little like fox nest or something. Okay, so the biggest thing here is the animation of this movie. Uh, this is a stop motion animation. So if you don't know, stop motion is basically made like using little models or like puppets or anything mm -hmm. that you take a picture uh, and then you move it just, just a tiny bit tiny and then bit. take another picture and then you play it back and it makes it look like it's moving. So, but this is a super time consuming, super difficult process, mm -hmm. um, really intricate process too. Um, but I'm a really big fan of it. I know you are too because yes. the intro of the show is actually Lily's uh, work as the little Mike's movie talk with the yeah. film thing. So. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, I love stop motion, yeah. and so it, I, when Mike had an intro, I was like, I would really love to like, make that. That's so cool. Um, and it's so funny now that I get to talk about stop I know, motion look at show, that. Which is really fun. Full circle here. Yeah. And you also have your own stop motion movie mm -hmm. in the works. Yep, in the works. It's been going on for about a year now, um, and it's only going to be about five minutes long, so that really speaks to how time-consuming stop motion yeah. is, especially for a full feature-length film. I know mm -hmm. studios have taken years to finish their projects, yeah. which is honestly exhausting to think about. So I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm really proud of Wes Anderson and the whole creative team, especially the director yeah. of photography, who we were talking about earlier, did mm -hmm. Paranorman, he did Chicken Run, he did a Wallace and Gromit so cool. movie, and he did Wes Anderson's later stop motion film, Isle of Dogs, which is also really good, and I also that's, recommend that you check it that's out. That's so cool. Super detailed. That guy amazing. just must be living his best life. I know, right? And, <laughs> and to have that creative vision is just so impressive. Yeah. When I look at stuff like, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas, mm -hmm. like James and the Giant Peach, yeah. and you, like all the Wallace and Gromit stuff, it's just like, I, I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, you know, how, how did they do that? Yeah. All these effects and stuff going on, and how time consuming that must have been too. And uh, it really, you really don't begin to notice how masterful that sort of craft is until you do it. Because I know when mm -hmm. I've been making my own stop motion short, I'm, I have to get really creative in the way that I think about how I'm gonna make somebody just like walk through a door. Yeah, and think about especially how, when it's 2D. Too. Exactly, Yours yeah, is so 2D. mine is just paper, just like Mike's intro. And so it's just, it, it gets really complicated really quickly. <laughs> so Wes Anderson was actually inspired by the holiday short films, uh, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer mm -hmm. from like the 60s and 70s, which I think was really cool because I love those movies. Yeah. Um, and so, and this was his first animated movie. Um, so he shot at 12 frames per second instead of 20, the usual 24, just mm -hmm. to kind of get like the old timey feel. Um, and still, it's the whole movie is almost 62,000 individual pictures, oh which that is just insane. 62,000. I'm almost yeah. impressed it's not more. Yeah. And I actually did the math. I was like, if it's like it's like an hour and a half. Yeah. So like there you 12 go. frames per second. It's it's just insane. And I think the movie really wouldn't work as well if it was all just CG. What do you think about that? I think I think that really goes back to again. I'm gonna say this again, but just just the imagination concept of mm. if it's if it's CGI, you can create it in a computer, and it can be while it is still intentional, and there is still a lot of uh, really uh, intricate thought that goes into that. This you, you really have to think about every single detail. I was watching some of it earlier, and. Mr. Fox is walking through this like downtown layer and downtown an uh, underground layer and there's somebody in the back and his foot twitches and I was <laughs> like they did not have to do that yeah everything is intentional like yeah. I mean there's not like people or extras saying like oh I, I just did this because yeah. I felt like it you know every little movement in that you see on screen is just intentional yeah. so that's crazy and I think also when you think about Wes Anderson, you think about how beautiful his shots are and how mm, yeah. well laid out they are, how um, symmetrical they are, different things like that. And when mm. you get to do animation of any kind, you really get to plan out every single thing. Sometimes when you're filming on set, accidents happen. You don't notice that something has come in the screen or anything or in the frame. Mm -hmm. um, but with this, you you really have control over every single little thing. Yeah. So to think that Wes and his creative team got to have that much input on every single shot that that really 
is really oh, amazing. I, yeah, I know. It's so amazing. And it's almost like, I mean, a lot of Wes Anderson movies are like this, but they're almost like picture books, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Like seeing the, the art style and everything. And this just, like, worked really well for that yeah. type of yeah. style that he has. Yeah. Which I'm sure Roald Dahl would be really proud of. Oh, because yeah. Because his books, I think of the illustration in his books a lot. A lot mm -hmm. Like, more than I probably should, I yeah. think about the illustrations in his, in his books, even his chapter I books. wonder what he would think of this movie. I wonder. That's interesting. I bet he'd like it. So I just have some other little fun facts here. The puppets were only about 12 inches tall. Okay. So just about like that. But if you, I just, when you watch the movie, if you watch clips, they're, they're so detailed. Mm -hmm. Like every little thing. You and their, the, their the fur, fur moves. Yeah, yeah the fur. <laughs> <laughs> every, every little thing. Um, and it's crazy how they, like, how they can build these little models and have so much, like, articulation. And, like, their face has, like, mm -hmm. however many hundred movements or whatever I don't know it's yeah. just insane what they're able to do with just like little physical puppets yeah it's crazy yeah. Um, another fun fact uh, one of mr. Fox's costumes was made from Wes Anderson's actual corduroy no way <laughs> yeah that's so cool so Wes Anderson like sent um, I don't know where he I guess he wasn't on set so he sent one of the costume designers like here's the corduroy that I want for no the pants or whatever and they actually Aww. made a little Costume for the Aww. costumes are so cool. They movie. are so cool. Like, I would wear any of their all outfits. the outfits. <laughs> it's like a. It's like what would you? How would you describe the the outfits? The outfits. I don't movie? know anything about clothes. I don't, <laughs> I don't either. I don't know. It it feels sort of rustic and simple, but um, I don't know. A little bit it's, old timey too. Yeah, you know? yeah. Almost like seventies kind of. Sure. Like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, the outfits, I think they really just add to the humor here because mm -hmm. they're all just animals. They, yes. There's, there's like, foxes, obviously. Uh, there's, like, badgers. There's mice. And they all have just these, like, super cool outfits mm -hmm. on and just yeah. running around like people are right. just really funny to watch, too. So is there anything in particular that you wanted to talk about that stands out to you in this movie? Or well... We haven't really even yeah. talked about the story, even, or Right, anything, right. But. And that's... I would love to talk about the characters. Who is oh, your yeah. Who's your favorite character in the movie? So my favorite character is Kylie. Uh, he's actually a possum. Mm -hmm. um, the highlight of his <laughs> character is his eyes go all crazy when he gets scared. Are you listening to me? I look into your eyes, and I can't tell whether you're getting anything I'm saying. I think my favorite character, well, I guess I have two. I really like Ash and Chris. My roommate and I like to pretend that um, that she is Ash and I am Chris. <laughs> and uh, just the way that we react to different things. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll leave it up to you to decide who I am. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but uh, I just, I love how they play off of each other and how they are jealous of each other. Okay. I, I remember the scene where Christopherson was like jumping into a swimming pool yeah, and, and he's just like <laughs> flipping and everything. And Ash is just like, what? <laughs> I have to say, Mrs. Fox literally is amazing. She is so cool. Oh, yeah. She saves everybody at the end, basically. She does, Like, yeah. she brings Mr. Fox back, and she's like, you can do this. And, she's like, and without and she's her, like, I'm nothing pregnant. would have happened. So, shout out to Mrs. Fox. Shout out to Meryl Streep. Um, oh, yeah. Y'all killed it. Okay, so, Lily, what is your favorite scene in this movie? Mm. My favorite scene in this movie is at the very, very end. Um, and this is after they have had this massive showdown fight and between Ash has been farmers. saved between yeah. all the farmers. Everybody's been saved. There was a wild dog on the loose. Oh yeah. Blue the rabbits were the involved. Rabbit. Oh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, and Mr. Fox and his family are driving back home and they're in this little like motorcycle thing. Um, and Mr. Fox, this whole movie has a fear of wolves. And there's a scene oh, yeah, where a wolf appears in the distance and they stop and almost respect the wolf. To this day, I still don't know what this scene actually means, but there's something about either. it that just really strikes me every time I see it. And I wish I knew why, but the scene is just so beautiful. And I think this recognition of the fact that they are different types of animals. Mm -hmm. And that's something that Mike and I were talking about a little bit too, was how animals have in this movie the, they have different roles based on what kind of animal that they are. Yeah. Um, and that's a whole, that comes into play at the end when they're making their big strategy of like, okay, you're this kind of animal. Oh, yeah. You're really good <laughs> at this. Go do that. Yeah. Um, but I think Mr. Fox has this sort of internal fear of maybe not being good enough or not being enough just in general. And so mm -hmm. um, I think when he sees that wolf, he kind of acknowledges that fear that he's different than other people and that's okay. And that's a whole thing too of being mm -hmm. different. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this little thing that he does. So, 
Yeah. I think too, like, because I, I remember the wolf being like, it's. I mean, it's not like a wild animal, mm -hmm. but it's like a totally different class of like, because he's not wearing any clothes. No, he's no. not. Yeah. And he's just like, and he's not walking like upright, upright either. Yeah. So it's almost like, I mean, he's obviously intelligent because he respect. He sees Mr. Fox's sign and right. and does the little thing back. Um, yeah. But it's almost like like. There's a mutual respect there between two different cultures, yeah. which is cool. Yeah, and I think that's another good uh, like thing to talk about is because they talk about like going wild or something like yeah. that. And oh, yeah. How yeah. Um, if if you're wild or something, that means you're bad or some of those kind mm -hmm. of connotations. Yeah. And so um, I think, I don't know, that's that's interesting, especially I think when Kylie does go like crazy in his eyes. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. a little, that's a little part of that, and they're always like, yeah. Um. Okay, so the big takeaway here Mm -hmm. um, in general, what's the big takeaway for Fantastic Mr. Fox? It's the best movie. <laughs> the best movie ever. <laughs> the plot is amazing. The characters, while they're animals, have such natural human basic needs, which is so cool. Yeah. I think and everyone totally can identify relatable. with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic, yeah, fantastic. no fantastic. pun intended, <laughs> cast of characters. Um... Yeah, so if you like Fantastic Mr. Fox, or if you like Wes Anderson, mm -hmm. or if you like stop motion movies, any any of those three, or all three, uh, check out Isle of Dogs. Um, Wes Anderson also directed this movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really great movie. I actually, hot take, I actually like this more than Fantastic Mr. Fox. Okay. Have you seen Isle of Dogs? I have seen Isle yes. of Dogs. I saw it in theaters when it came out. Oh, and, wow. Um, it... It is a great movie. I, I actually... I'm on Fantastic Mr. Fox side. You can be on Isle of Dogs side. Yeah, yeah. We but that's okay, they're both here. still very good. I actually watched it on a plane for the first time, Whoa. which was not a great... Interesting first movie Not experience. Yeah, <laughs> not a great experience, um, but I watched it again, um, and it's just, it's really great. Uh, it's set in Japan, and it follows this boy that he searches for as a lost dog, and it's really sweet, it is and really sweet. It's, it's just a great movie. Yeah. Thank you, Lily, for coming onto the show. Of course, thank you for having me. Thank you guys for watching and listening to our ramblings about uh, Wes Anderson's Fox puppets. <laughs> <laughs> when you put it like that. <laughs> uh, and uh, keep an eye out for the next episode. Um, it's coming out in two weeks from when this one comes out. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Lily. And see you guys later. Bye. Bye.